Entity Framework 7 has a lot of new features and at some points it's very difficult to navigate through them and understand exactly what they bring to the table. But in this video I'm about to reveal you what I think is the coolest, absolutely most useful feature in Entity Framework 7, so stay with me. Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this video I want to reveal you what I think might be the coolest and absolutely most useful feature in Entity Framework 7. Now when it comes to new releases there are always a lot of new features announced and it's often very difficult to understand exactly what of those features is actually very useful in our applications and which is just well some syntactic sugar or things similar to that. But before we get into this I would like you to pause this video and just head over to the comment section and let me know what you think is the most useful feature of EF7 before you watch into what I would have to say. And also in this video I want to reveal you a guy, a person that you should absolutely follow if you're interested in Entity Framework stuff. And I can absolutely guarantee you that if you follow this guy, you will become an absolute Entity Framework guru. So at some point during this video, I will reveal that person's name and also some places where you might find him on social media. And now it's time to reveal what I think is the most useful feature of EF7 and that is JSON columns. Now JSON is supported in different several relational databases and it actually is a very important and nice thing because we can kind of like have a hybrid approach between a relational database and a non-relational database in a single place. And that is actually great and unfortunately until this release of Entity Framework 7 we didn't have a very easy way to work with JSON in SQL Server when working with Entity Framework Core. But starting with Entity Framework 7 or Entity Framework Core 7, this problem is fixed and we can definitely leverage and take advantage of this powerful feature and functionality that will solve us a lot of pain with boilerplate code that we would need to write in order to configure owned entities. And all entities is something that in most of the applications we cannot simply go around. It's something that we always have there and it's something that we always need to configure and it's always results in a lot of boilerplate code and a lot of headaches for us. But that's already a matter of the past with this cool new feature. So let's look into how this feature might be useful. What we have here is a very basic setup but it's very similar to what you might have in really all the applications that you are building. And we're working here with this concept of user profile for which we have this idea of basic info. Now if we look in this basic information class we see that we have a name which is also our custom class that contains only a first name and a last name. We want to keep it really simple but still powerful to showcase what this feature of JSON columns actually can do for us. And if we go back to this basic information we see that okay we have also an email address which is a string and we have this list of addresses this is once again a custom type because if this is an eShop for instance I might want to have different delivery addresses so therefore this very simple address but I want to have a list of them. So even if we take a look at this setup that we have right here before this JSON columns feature in Entity Framework 7 what we needed to do is to probably well use a dedicated entity for the basic info because we have two different levels of nesting there and we couldn't achieve this in entity framework previously then the basic info would have an own entity for name which might be in the same table but that would result in adding two additional columns to the basic info table or it might be even in a dedicated or separated table and as for the addresses that would be another own entity that would reside in a dedicated table and to achieve all this stuff we need to write or we needed to write a bunch of different configurations in our own model creating stuff. But if we talk about JSON columns it's even easier to configure than the regular owned entity types in Entity Framework. So let's see how we could do that. What we want to achieve right now is to make this basic info property be a JSON column in a table. And to do that the very first thing that we need to do of course is to configure these JSON columns in Entity Framework. And to do that we need to go over to the DB context class and we need to override the own model creating method. That would be something like this and I will walk you through what we do here. So we use the model builder and we say that we kind of like want to define some things for the user profile. Now as we have discussed earlier the idea of JSON columns is basically applied to what we know as owned entity. And before we could kind of like configure those owned entities with owns one or owns many 
And then we would have to specify different types of or different properties that we wanted to configure in certain ways, like mapping to different tables or things similar to that. But what we do here instead is say that, hey, okay, for the user profile, we want or this user profile owns a user information. And the way to configure JSON columns is then we can then actually provide or use this owned navigation builder. And the first thing that we specify on this own navigation builder is that we want to be it in JSON format. And that's why we use this method that is called to JSON. But then we need to configure it further because this basic info object has nested properties that are of custom types. So it would be a nested JSON what we have to achieve here. And the cool thing is that once we have defined this user info as an owned navigation basically what we can do is the own navigation itself can then own one or own many things so therefore we have here owns one and the user info owns a name because it is only one name that we have for a user profile in the basic info class and then it owns many addresses because the user profile in the basic info class can have many addresses and that's literally all the configuration that we need to do to take advantage of this feature of JSON columns in Entity Framework, which is very, very nice because even configuring owned entity types previously to having this option to use JSON was way more complicated than that. The next obvious step is to create a migration and take a look at the migration and how it is different compared to a regular migration when we use regular and owned entity types. I will use this tool in Rider, which will help me to kind of like generate the migration I will say that I would like to add a migration and uh, let's call it initial and we'll keep all the default settings so we just run it. And now it would kind of like build a project and create a migration for us and we'll be back when we have the new folder with the migrations. So here we have the migration and if we take a look at the migration we see that we have only one single table. Let me make this smaller so that we can see everything on the screen. We have this users table and in this users table we have this user profile ID. We have only the created date and last modified date and then we have this user info which is of type string. So you see that if we would have worked with regular entity types or regular owned entity types you would have had here at least one additional other table for the basic info and one other table for the addresses and depending on our configuration we would also have had a third table for names but in this case we have only just one table and that's it and in this user info column this will be basically the place where we will place or insert these json properties so now that we have everything set up, let's see it in action and run the application and see how powerful this feature actually is. But enough talking, let's see this in action. And for that, I have already prepared this minimal API where I have mapped some endpoints for getting resources, creating resources and updating resources. And we will kind of like use those. So we have this map post, which gets a user. And by the way, for simplicity's sake, I'm using also the same model or for the API contract, like user profile, the same model that we also write in a database. But once again, that's for simplicity reason. Now, the idea is that we get this user profile as a body. And what we do here is, of course, yeah, we see the created, we set the create date and the last modified date. But then basically this user profile that we have from the JSON to from, from the body should contain all the information for the basic info. Now, uh, and then we add it to the database. Uh, well, to the DP context and then save the changes and return the results. So that would be it. Now let's move over to Postman and run this application and make a request to see it in action and how things are then stored in our database. So the application is up and running. Let's go to Postman where I have already saved the request for posting users. And here I have all the information that I want to post for this user. And as you can see, I post this, uh, well, let's say nested JSON where we have this user profile ID, then we have for the user info, we have the name, which is an object. We have the email address, which contains directly a string. And then we have addresses, which is a collection, an array, and everything is wrapped in this JSON that we will send as a body. So let's run this request and then check exactly what happens or what we have in the database. But first of all, let's wait for the response. So here we have the response. We see that we got this resource back that we have just created. Now let's go one step further and let's take a look in the database and see how this would look like. And here I have my database. I guess I just have to refresh it. And then here we have these tables. And if I go on this user table and then I click, uh, click select top 1000 rows, that should give me this exact result. And if we take a look in this user info, we see that it's actually 
in JSON format. And of course we see here just a portion of the string, but if we then copy this out and put it somewhere else, we would see the entire JSON string. And now it's time to deliver on the earlier promise. When it comes to Entity Framework 7 or Entity Framework in general, there is a guy that I follow and really he does post a lot of very valuable and good information about Entity Framework and the name of this guy is Oleg Kirilchuk. And you see here on the screen and you'll find also in the description of this video some places on social media where you might find him. And if you want to become really an entity framework guru, that's the person that you should definitely follow. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like it, so it will be easier to discover for other people that might be interested in the same topic. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and also make sure to hit the notification bell so that you are always notified whenever something new happens on the channel. And also stay tuned because later in this video, I will also reveal you a very important scenario where actually these JSON columns is providential. It helps us a lot. But before we dive into that, let's look into some more complicated stuff because I am sure that one of the questions that you might have right now regarding JSON columns in Entity Framework is, okay, but how do we manage updates with such JSON properties, with such nested JSON that we have in our application? And also, how can we perform advanced queries? Can we perform projections using JSON columns? And let's look into that and we'll find an answer to this. I am fairly sure that updates is one of the first concerns that you might have. So how do we update JSON columns? Well, things are actually very, very easy. And what we have here, once again, for simplicity reason, we take the same user profile that we use throughout the entire application. So it's exactly the same model. But the idea is that here in this case, we'll have the updated version of the user profile. What we do is, of course, we get it from the database. So the entity is tracked. That's, that's a really important, important stuff. And then the next thing that we can do here is simply, okay, if the user exists in the database, we just provide the new user info that we get basically from our API call. And then we also set the last modified date. Now, I would like you to actually take a very careful look at this one because that, there is one thing that's missing here from what you would have regularly in Entity Framework Core. And that is the include statement. Now, the cool thing about JSON columns is that we don't actually need to include them. They are included by default. So no includes anymore. Our code gets not cluttered with includes anymore at all. But still we have the ability or the freedom to actually, well, just look or get the properties or only the properties that we need from the database. And we'll take a look at that just in a few seconds. Now here, in order to do things, I would like to also run a request that I have prepared previously, which is this put. Now in this put, there's actually only one thing that I'm doing. And basically I'm modifying just this city of this address. Now the previous address here was Seattle and now the city is Munich. So this is the only update that we are doing. So if we then click a send to the API, then we have this 204 no content, which means that everything was it correctly and to test this we can even go to this get and run this get again and if we take a look at these addresses we see that this address right now is updated and it has munich here as a city for the second address and not seattle as it, it was previously the next thing that i want to show you is that json columns in the entity framework 7 are also very easy to work with when it comes to more advanced querying and projection and to show you that, what I will do is simply I will use here a redesign of this map get endpoint, and the redesign would be like that. Now, of course, I have added here I have added here only a few things that I can showcase exactly how we can do more advanced querying on JSON columns and how we can do projections. So what we have here is this order by, and in this order by, of course, it's not really complicated, but the idea is that we have this user. On this user, we have this owned entity, which is the user info. And this entity has an owned name and the name has a first name. And even if this is a JSON column and this is a nested JSON string in the database, everything is baked already into Entity Framework. So we can do ordering, we can do different type of filtering or whatever we need to do, we can do even on these JSON columns very easily. And if we want to use projections to just get only the data that we need from the database and then, well, give it as a response, we can do this by simply using this select. This is how we use a projection. And in the projection itself, we create here this new object in which we only take the information that we have in the name 
like the first name, the last name. Once again, this is a nested JSON property. And then we also take this email address. So now we have created this select and then we return this as a to list. Let's run the application once again and see exactly the end result. So the application is up and running now. Let's go over to Postman and let's go once again to this get and let's run a request. And here we have the result. As you can see, in this case, we have only the first name, the last name and the email address. So the projection was successfully, even if we didn't project anything from, let's say, the base entity, the first entity, the user. We just projected information from the JSON columns, like the first name, the last name and the email address. And those properties, they weren't even on the same nesting level in the JSON string. So we have found out till now the JSON columns is really a very powerful feature in Entity Framework 7 that allows us to easily work with owned entities. And I have mentioned earlier that I want to actually specify or describe you a scenario where this feature is actually providential. Is it helps a lot. And that is domain driven design and persisting value objects. You can configure all the value objects as JSON columns on your aggregates. And that would make working with value objects and persisting them much easier because it totally eliminates the idea to have an identifier. But before we wrap up, I would also like to talk about a few scenarios where we shouldn't actually use JSON properties. Well, a first scenario where we shouldn't use JSON columns is when we have dedicated entities, for instance, that we need to persist in the database. And I have seen some tutorials out there where we took this example, for instance, with book and author or blog and author, and we have configured the author as a JSON column. Well, this is not a good approach because most probably the idea of author when it comes to a blogging platform or to a library application, the author would be part of the domain model itself. So it would belong to the business logic. And we might want to have, for instance, queries to find out, okay, what are all the authors on our, on our platform? Or who are all the authors that come from a different or a certain country? Now, in that case, obviously authors should be still a dedicated entity and we would have to create relationships between the blog and the author or between the book and the author, depending on what, what scenario you are exactly using. A second scenario where we might consider to not use JSON columns is when we have collections that could potentially be very, very large. Now, obviously with JSON columns, we can store a lot of data, but it becomes probably very unpractical to work with that specific data. So if you have a lot or if you have a huge collections, I would still maybe advise to use regular entities and regular relationships in Entity Framework. If you are enjoying this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like it so that others might find it easier. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that you are always notified when there is something new happening on this channel. And if you have any question or if you want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave a comment and I would be more than happy to answer and to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.